Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikens from Big Mountain Studio, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about notifications. This is the third part in a series where I taught you how to customize picker views. And we started with a normal picker view, and then we made it horizontal like this. And this is kind of like a cool way to use a picker view by making it horizontal. I've never really seen this used before, so I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, and that was the last video. So if you want to go back to the last video and watch it, you can. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to update this total price right here. So as I make changes to these picker views, it'll figure out the cost of each of the days in between and put the total down here. So right now, like between these two days, this would just be $70 because it's from, you know, it's the same day, right? The same night. But if I go back one more, this will make it $145. So let's figure out how to do that. Now, right now I'm inside the date model picker. And this is our class that we created for our custom picker, which has all the code for the data source, handling the, of the data source, and handling of all the delegate functions. And this is where we created our custom picker right here. We had the three labels, and we return a view. And the view is rotated because it's a horizontal picker that we're using. So we need another function here. And if I start typing in picker, you can see the functions that we have left. Now the picker view, it is a lot like a table view, but it doesn't have as many functions. So it's a little bit easier to work with, but a lot of the concepts are exactly the same. So what we want is this one right here, did select row. And you'll notice this sounds a lot like the table views, did select function. So let's use that. Now right here, we can't do the, the calculation in this code right here because Remember, this one class right here is being used for two picker views. And each class doesn't know about the other class. Each picker view doesn't know about the other picker view. So we have to send a notification to someplace that knows about both picker views. And the class that knows about both picker views is your view controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a notification from this class and our view controller is going to listen for that notification. And when it gets that notification, it's going to call a function, which will then look at both picker views, find out, you know, which item they're on, and then look at the data and calculate the price. So what we need to do here is we need to do what's called a post notification. We need to, and posting a notification means just kind of like sending it out. And anyone who's listening will get the message. So the way to do that is we want to use the notification center, which is right here. And we want to use the default one. And like I said, we're doing a post, right? So the post is pretty simple. We're just going to use this one right here. Now, if I wanted to send any data along with this post, I can do that by using this one right here. The user info allows us to create kind of like a dictionary, you know, with a key and a value but we're not going to use that. We don't need to use that. We're just going to use this one right here. Now, this is a little bit different, this name. This changed a couple of versions back. So it's looking for an NS notification name, but they kind of like made a mistake. I think they need to update this. They can actually just use a notification.name. They don't need the NS anymore. If you guys have been programming for a while, the last version of Swift, they started removing all the NS's from the object names. So what we need here is, this is kind of like a key. Now this name right here, this is kind of like a unique key because your app can have many notifications in it. So how do you know when you listen to a notification, how do you know like which one to listen to or when you receive a notification, which one did you get? And this basically kind of uniquely identifies your notifications. So we can do it like this. And for object here, this is basically the sender's information. So I'm just going to put in self. Self represents the class that you're in. Okay, good. Now that we're sending a notification, we need something to listen to it, right? So let's go back into our view controller here. And let's listen for this notification. And I'm going to be using the same object. Notification center dot default. There we go. And what we're going to do is, is add an observer. And this is kind of like a listener. This is someone who will observe for notifications that are sent out. And 
for the observer, this is the object that will be handling the notification, which is ourself. And for selector, what this does is, when you receive a notification, what do you want to do with it? What function do you want to call? So the selector allows us to set a function that we want to call every time we receive a notification. So what I'll do is I'll just say, and the way you write this is with a hash, like that, and say selector. And then you just define your, your function right here. So I'll say picker changed. Now remember, this function doesn't exist yet. So let me just write that right now down here. It would be great if Swift had these refactoring tools. So, you know, if you, if you did something like this, you could just say uh, create function for me. Now, what is this name? Does this look familiar where it says nsnotification.name? Yeah, this is the unique key that it's looking for, the unique key for the notification. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click it here. You can delete the NS. It doesn't need that anymore. And what do we call it? We called it pickers changed, right? And then for the object, we're just going to set to nil. We don't need to identify an object. Okay. Now you notice there could be a danger here, right? With the this text being different. You know, if I don't have them exactly the same, then when this sends a notification, the other one, like if I, if like for example, if this was actually picker changed, and in my view controller, it says pickers with an S changed, it's not going to work. When this sends a notification, this will never observe it because this notification name is different. So, how do we guarantee that these two strings are exactly the same? Well, what we can do with this notification name is we can actually extend it. And earlier, I was showing you examples of creating extensions where we created extensions for the date model picker, which you see up here. We have an extension here, we have an extension here, and it's extending an existing class. Well, the notification.name is an existing class, and we can extend it and add our own key, or you know, our own uh, string here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a new class. So we're going to create a new Swift file. And we'll call it notification name extension, like that. Okay, it puts it down here. And let's create our extension here. And we're going to be extending the notification dot name, like that. And then we want to create a variable, right? So we have to make it static, so we don't have to instantiate this class. So we'll just say static let pickers changed equals, and then here, this is where we're going to create our notification.name. So I could actually just come here and grab this and stick it in here. Okay. Now this way, what I'll have is I have a variable that I can access from anywhere in the application. And it's a type of notification.name. So look what happens when I come back here to the picker and I need to give it a name. So I come back here and now what I can do is I can just hit dot and there's my notification name, picker's changed. So that's it. Uh, what is this? I think this will go away if I build it. Yeah. Okay, good. So I have one more place I need to update, and that's on my view controller. So I can get rid of this. And there it is. Pickers changed. Okay, so I think you can see the value here. You know, if you have a lot of different notifications from different places, you can just keep adding variables to this notification name. And then when you create when you set up your notifications, you can just hit dot and you should see all of your custom variables. So it makes it a lot easier. It lessens the chance that something is going to not sync up properly. Okay, so let's test this. But this function right here, picker changed, doesn't have any code in the function yet. 
So let's just add one line here. Uh, one of the things that I'll need is I'll need to know what the first picker is on. So let's just say let start equal, and this is my, my arrival day, right? The start day. So I need to go into the arrival day picker. And I need to look at the selected row. Which row is selected? And again, the component is the column. So a picker can have many columns. You know, like the first picker that we that I have where it has the month and the year. That's column zero or component zero and component one. But we only have one, so I'm just going to put zero in there. So this will tell us for the arrival date which day we're on. So let me just set a breakpoint and let's run this. See, these are the components right here. This is component zero and component one. Okay, so if I change this, it should trigger that notification. Okay, good. So the notification is working. So what happened was, when I, as soon as I made that change, this function got called, it sent a notification, and then it went to the view controller. This was listening to it or observing it, and as soon as it observed it being called, it called this function right here, this pick or change function, and it came down here, and that's where we're at right now. All right, good, so the notification is working, so let's finish coding this pick or changed function. The next thing we need is the end date, and that is our departure day picker. And you know, it's gonna be the same thing. We wanna look at the select row in component zero. Then we're going to calculate a total price, right? So we'll say var total price. And you know, I'm just, normally a price is gonna be like a double or a decimal or something like that. Well, I'm not gonna have a decimal on mine. I'm just gonna make it an integer. And by default, it'll be zero. And here, let's, let me add some more space here <laughs> so we can see this more easily. All right, great. And then I'm going to do a calculation to get the total price. And then I'm going to assign it to a label. And the label, I already have an outlet for. It's this one here, total price label. So let's format that. It's going to have a dollar sign. And then we're going to have our total price in here like that. Okay, good. Now we have to figure out, we have to look at our, our model here. And let, let me just show you again what the model looks like. So it has a day name, price, and date. What we are interested in is just the price. And so it looks something like this. And here's what's going to happen. So the user is going to select a start date, which might be like this row right here. So they're going to select that. And then they're going to have a, an end date, which might be right here. So what we want to do is we want to grab just those items that are in between the start and the end, and then we're going to total up the price. So how do we do that? Well, luckily, there's some awesome functions that come with arrays, and that's all we have for our data is just an array of this date model. So what we're going to do is we're going to get just the items in that array that are between the start and end dates. And so we'll call this selected dates. And we want to get the data from the date model picker, uh, the model data. And remember, this model data, we assign that up in the view did load right here. So I could call this function again. I could call get data to get the same data that's in model data. And this is basically all we're accessing is this property right here. So that should be good enough. You know, if this data isn't going to change, it's in one place. So that's fine. I'm not going to call data.getData again. I'm just going to access, access the date model picker dot model data. That's currently what's in both of the date pickers. Okay, and then I'm just going to tell it that I want it a range of indexes from the start and then less than the end. And then I'm going to add one to it. Now, why do I do this? Because I want it inclusive of the end. So what this means is 
you know, when you grab an item from a model, you can just do something like this, right? You can say, give me the first item in the model, or give me the second one, or give me the third one, like that, just by using an index number. Well, one of the cool things in Swift is you can give a range of numbers. So you can say, give me everything between, you know, two and less than three. What this will do, this will just give you, this is the same as saying, give me number two, because if it's less than three, it's going to be two, right? Now, I wish, <laughs> I wish Swift would let you do this. Give me everything between two and three, inclusive of three. But it doesn't. It doesn't like that. Uh, it actually, I don't think it'll even build if you try to do that. Yeah, it gives you an error. Unresolved operator. Well, give you, can you do equal? Yeah. I think for this, it can only be, you know, less than or greater than. No. can't be greater than, can it? No, it can't. Yeah, so here, you can only use the less than. And that's what we're going to use. So... Let's change this back to end, and let's change this start range back to start. Okay, good. So that's going to give us all of the items, just the items between the start and the end. Oh, and, it, and I need to add plus one to it because I want it to include that end one. Now that I have that, what do I need to do? I want to cycle through each one of them or iterate through each one of them. So I can say for date, give it a name, in a selected date, dates. So what this will do is it'll just, you know, there might be like seven items in selected date. And it'll go through each of the seven items and put each one in this variable one at a time. So when I have it, I could just say total price equals... And then I want to, oops, I want to add it to whatever I have here. So I can say int, and I can say date dot price. But this isn't going to work. Why isn't this going to work? Because oh, oh, I have too many equals here. <laughs> this isn't going to work because remember the price is a string, and we're going to convert it to an integer. But it has a dollar sign in there, right? So with the dollar sign, it's going to break it. So if I try to run this, uh, yeah, let's, we can say like um, it'll definitely have a value. Let me convert it. Oh, let's get rid of this breakpoint too. Okay, let's go here, and we'll make a change. Uh, okay, look at this. Uh, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So it's trying to convert it. It, this this date dot price does have a value, and uh, here I'll just prove it to you. If we come down here, you can say PO, which stands for print out, and then I'm just going to paste in date dot price and hit enter. And here you can see it equals eighty dollars, but when I try to convert it, it returned a n a nil because it can't convert the dollar sign. So what we need to do is strip away that dollar sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable to put it into called price string. And then I'm going to get that price like that. And I'm going to replace that dollar sign with an empty string. And you can do it just with this function right here, replace occurrences of. So basically what this will do is just kind of search and replace, right? So find the dollar sign and replace it with an empty string. And then I'm going to convert that into an in integer. Okay, let's try that. Okay, make a change. Aha, there we go. So it's working great now. One last thing that we have to do. I know, I told you this that last function was going to be the last thing that we need to do. But notice when we first came in here, it had the wrong, the wrong value. It said $400, right? So when we come in here, we want it to actually calculate the correct price. So how do we do that? It's actually when we it's when we click on the when we click on the next button, that's when we want to trigger the calculation. So let's go into this function here, this next function, and all we're going to do is just call this function right here, and that should do it for us automatically. So we can stop this. Okay, so that function 
I extracted everything into my view controller extension here. And here's our next function right here. So this is when we click on the next button. Actually, you know what we can do just to make this easier so you can see it better? Let's just put it right here. This is the, the when the next this is the action for the next button. So we'll just call picker changed. And let's run it and make sure that when we click next, it has the correct price. There you go. So basically what it's doing is it's adding 80, 75, and 70 to give us 225. All right, that works great. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something about notifications and maybe you learned some other things about some string functions like replacing occurrences of, and you also learned how to select a range of indexes for an array. This model data right here, this is an array of data and this is your range operator here to select a range of data from an array. And then you maybe you also learned how to now iterate through each item in your array and do some kind of operation or calculation like we did here. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with your friends and go ahead and subscribe because I'll be coming out with more cool videos like this one. All right, thanks guys.